Hey, what's up everybody? BD44 coming at you with another video. So I figured I'd do a therapy session Sunday morning. Just got through eating breakfast, doing all the good stuff, shower, teeth brushing, all that. And now it's time to just focus on everything, which is never a good thing for me. Um, what's bothering me and giving me anxiety is deadlines. Deadlines are um, the car deadline. Of course, that's been repossessed. I have but only so long. The paperwork's uh, locked away somewhere. I'll put it somewhere. And to be honest with you, I don't want to look at it because I know that uh, it'll provide me a great deal of stress and anxiety that I already feel enough of as is. But at the same time, I need to be aware of that deadline because uh, if I'm to either meet it or let it go, I don't want it to pass without me being aware of it. So what I'll probably do is just call them tomorrow and just ask for an extension like I did last time to buy myself a little more time if possible. <laughs> I really do want to give the car away, but the fear of needing the car is never, ever going to go away, even though I can't afford the car. If I need to go to work, I don't want to be on the bus. All that bullshit. Excuse my language. And then it's the phone. Every month, the phone, of course, has to be paid. So that deadline is coming up. I bought myself an extension for that, but it's somewhere in the middle of the month. I have to pay half the bill, and you know how that goes. And then I'm looking at my bar of soap. As I did, told you guys yesterday, that bar of soap that's necessary to replace, or get more of, rather. I can only get it from one place within distance, anyway. I could hop in an Uber, but I don't have any Uber money. Hop on the bus, but I, that's anxiety stuff. I don't even want to get on the bus. Or I could walk for about seven, eight blocks, which would probably do me some good, to be honest with you. But I ain't going to do that to get to like a CVS to get my glycerin soap. Because any other soap that I buy, like if I were to go down the street to a liquor store and buy Dove soap, it'll, it'll cause me all kinds of issues. Can't use that stuff anymore. So I got to either sell some crypto to secure all of that money, for which I'm kind of afraid to do because crypto represents financial freedom later on and I know what it's worth later on and I want to keep everything for later on but I need stuff now so oh, I'm always at war with myself with stuff like that so that's part of it and yeah that's what I'm dealing with just just anxious very anxious very uncomfortable very worried about deadlines <laughs> I feel good as far as um, my, my physically, I feel fine. Like I said, I had my meal and everything. That was cool. Um, slept good. Had some good <laughs> good sleep. Dreamed about one of my old childhood friends. It's this girl I used to know. I didn't even, I didn't, we didn't have that type of friendship. But for whatever reason in my dream, we had went on a date. Um, and it didn't go well, I guess. So she stole my car. That's That's what she decided to do. No, actually, no, I got to take that back. It, it was much more complicated than that. She took my mom's car at gunpoint. Apparently, my mother was still alive in this dream. And she went up to my mom and pointed a gun at her and took the car. But it was my car. I don't, I don't know. That's how the dream was. You know how dreams are. They're not, they're not going to quite make sense. And they're, they're really extreme, but they're not going to seem extreme. It's that kind of weirdness. Also, I had another dream where I had gotten into it with a friend of mine f over a video game or something. She beat my button some 2K or something, and we argued, got on the bus, argued some more. I got off the bus early. She stayed on. We ended up meeting back at my house, and I apologized to her for, for how I behaved and woke up. Just dreams, you know what I mean? And that's only significant because, as I told you guys, I only dream vividly when I'm sober. And I've been forced into being sober based on my financial situation. So I ain't been no, I've been dry. So uh, as a result, it's provided me um, a clarity of mind that allows me to, to see my dreams as opposed to just going to sleep and waking up with nothing. So that's one part of it I've enjoyed. Um, you know, sleeping, <laughs> sleeping has been good. But uh, yeah, man, my anxiety and, 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 and all of these different mental blocks, these things I tell myself I cannot or will not do, I cannot sell amc because i'd rather die doing you know than than to give up my opportunity at, at holding the line and financial freedom it's true it's true I, I definitely would not rather do that um for any reason whatsoever especially since we've seen good things happen in the name of 
what it is that we're trying to do and feels like we're close, even though we're probably not close. You never know how close you actually are to something spontaneous, but it seems like the change that we've been looking for is close. And I don't want to break the line, especially when I know how impossible it will be to reestablish my position, especially given the fact that we don't know when this is going to happen. Sit up here with this many shares and then sell three fourths of it and then it goes to the moon and I'll hate myself for that or sell all of it and goes to the moon and I'll want to die over that. So it's like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Like, that's how extreme my brain has gotten. I mean, it's complete and utter isolation. As you guys know, I haven't left the house very much, but to throw the trash out or go to get my car like two months ago, a month and a half ago, spend all that money to get the damn car out just for them to turn around and take it the next month again. I'm just miserable, man. I, I had my unemployment taken, as you guys know, or rather not given to me after them telling me that all kinds of different stuff over the last three months of applying for it just for them to turn around and tell me nope because my second to last job just you know decided that they weren't going to pay it which is fine because I didn't expect them to I was hoping it would be my last job that they would ask for it but deadlines and bullcrap California nonsense made it so that I didn't meet the deadlines necessary in my within the time frame from which I worked that job for it to qualify to pay for my unemployment so they went to the job previous to that and that one didn't end as well as it should have so they hated it and left me out to dry, even though I worked for them um, during the pandemic when they needed people to work because nobody wanted to do the job that I did. I was an essential worker for that company, and that was not mentioned at all when denied. <laughs> they didn't tell them that I was essential and so on and so forth. So I got screwed there. What else is new? So, yeah, man, I'm just obviously in a space of, of mental anguish. And, you know, I'm sure going out there, getting a job could help me. I, mean, I can't bring myself to even do that. Go outside and do what? Be miserable about it. You guys already know how this goes. If you've watched any of these uh, therapy sessions, you've heard this crap a million times. But it is what it is, man. This is where we're at. Anxiety is at a... Pretty, pretty, not an all time high, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty up there, man. Um, I don't provide myself a whole lot of room to fix my problems. Obviously, I need to call my grandfather, as I was telling you guys in the last video, and I just don't know how to do that. Call my uncle, and my grandfather, tell them, tell them all the truth, and tell them what's going on, and, and give them, give them the rundown of what I need and, and how, how best to, to help me, and then what? Sit here some more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm still in very much a bad place in terms of fixing my own problems. So if they help me now, all that's going to do is enable me to continue on this path. It just doesn't end. It doesn't end. But on the flip side, of course, I'm doing all of this. I got the channel going, got my art going, a playlist going, doing all these different things. So it's not like I'm just sitting here miserable. I'm working. It's not the type of working that I need to be working in order to make some money. So all these mental blocks, coupled with my anxiety, coupled with my reality and my circumstances, coupled with these deadlines, it just makes me very, 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 very unhappy, anxious, worried, all that good stuff. All the mental stuff that ain't real. It ain't real, but it is real to me. So as you know, I'm tired of this. I've been talking about not living as a means of escaping it because I'm too prideful to ask people for money or too prideful to break out of what it is that I've committed to, which is AMC. I'm not going to do it. Definitely not doing that. So it's like, you know, everything's falling apart. As I've been saying, it's been falling apart. And it's not getting any better because my work ethic isn't where it should be, obviously. Getting myself out there and working the security job that I've been known to do. Especially without a car, that just provides even more anxiety, having to get in other people's cars or hop on a bus and all that stuff. It's just an, it's, it's anxiety-inducing. Very, very, very difficult to face those anxieties. I'm a nervous wreck, man. What can I say? It's as bad as it gets. I got the same problems right now that I had yesterday, but for some reason, because I'm getting closer to these deadlines, it just feels like a different type of unhappiness, you know? When you need a lot of help and you don't know how to ask for it, that's kind of where we're at. I think that's the moral of the story. I need a ton of help, and I don't know how to ask for it. Um... That's it. That is that is the gist of the feeling, man. I just got to 
I have to do something that I just refuse to do. And that's a very, very difficult place to live in. And I've been living in that space all of my life. There's always something like this. So you just get tired of it. I've been tired of it, but I'm still fighting, you know, and it's been awesome because in that same breath, I've had people I haven't talked to in years all reaching out to me at once. All like it's been about five people that I haven't talked to in over at, at the at, at least six months or more. And they all reached out to me over the last 24 hours. My brother, Naeem, my good friend that I grew up with in high school, you know, my right hand man. You know, that that dude mean everything to me, man. I remember when he lost his mom. You know, I was I was I was close to him at the time. You know, I, I was to, to to send prayers his way. He remembers when I lost mine. We both knew each other's moms, you know, that kind of thing. So that that's that's my brother. He's in town. He wanted to meet up and I can't even bring it to to tell him that I'm so broken right now that I couldn't meet up with him if I, you know, at all. But I let him know, you know, what I'm saying that that's my dog. You know, what I mean, he said good things and let him know I was I was happy. The Lord is working in his life and I'm continuing to pray for him daily, which I actually am, believe it or not. He's a part of that list of people that I pray for every day. I know when people say, you know, I've been praying for you, I've been praying for you, you know, they don't mean it. But, you know, I actually have been praying for this dude. His name is mentioned each and every time I pray. It's crazy how that works, man. But he was yet another reminder that I'm not alone out in this world. There's people rooting for me. There's people that would really be um, upset if I if I didn't keep fighting. And then it was another one of my guys at elementary school that was responding to my, my artwork um, on Facebook. He wanted to know who was drawing all of that. I was like, me. <laughs> see, the, you don't see the uh, initials. I, I initial everything I do. But, um, you know, he said he's in town. He wanted to hang out. Or will be in town soon. Uh, my aunt, my cousin, I was telling you about, you guys, you know, the cousin from Oakland. He's been reaching out. I can't bring myself to hit him up because I got to tell him the truth. That part is going to be tough for me. You know, my homegirl, Simone, another one of my friends that I grew up with. Uh, back when I was a little kid, she used to be in our clique and everything, me and a bunch of people. When I was really little, like 10 and 9 years old, she's been reaching out, praying for me, letting me know that she cares. You know what I mean? Just a lot of love coming my way in a time when I really need it. And I don't have, I'm not going to ask none of people for no money or nothing like that. That's not my character. Even in the space I'm in, I'm not going to be sitting up like, yo, could you send me some cash app? Hell no, never. Never would I do that. And I take a great deal of pride of being somebody who never will ask people for nothing because they don't never have to say, yeah, Brandon's on some scheming. Yeah, Brandon's here you go. He gonna ask for a buck. Nope. I don't want nobody to have that memory of me. And if they did have that memory of me, I want to be the guy that paid that stuff back right away if possible. Just like I did with my uncle when he gave me the money for the car. I didn't let four days pass without giving him that money. I sold out of AMC and some, well, some of my AMC to just make sure that he had his money as quick as I told him he was going to have it. But this time, I can't pay them back. And I need a lot more than just that. What he gave me, I need a lot more than that to fix my problems. And the demand in me, even though I'm so broken and sick and frustrated and life is all messed up, the man in me is fighting every cell in my body to keep from calling my uncle and my grandfather and telling them what's up. For one, I didn't answer their call the last two times they came. They called me. Hell, I'm such a trash nephew, grandson, that they sent me a card with $100 in it. I didn't even call them and thank them for it. But it wasn't because I didn't appreciate it. It's because I was so damn broken, I couldn't bring myself to tell them everything that was headed in my direction. All the stuff that I was dealing with, the last time I talked to them, I was on the phone crying like a baby grown-ass man crying on the floor because i was so frustrated with my situation and trying so hard to hold my shares and explaining to them you know i've already told you guys this but explaining to them you know that i'm not doing this for myself and i just broke down and that was something that i pride myself in not doing i don't be crying you know what i'm saying so it's been hard to face them again. It's been hard to call them again. And I think the only saving face is I told them that last time I spoke to them. Like, it took everything in my heart just to answer the phone because I'd be so anxious about talking to you guys about my problems and telling y'all how bad things have gotten. And the only time I want to really bring things to y'all is when things are good, but they're never good. And they're all my fault. 
I own that, whether it be through my frustration and sickness or whatever it is, the confusion of it all. It's all my fault. I'm a grown man and it's my responsibility to help myself and I just can't bring myself to do what needs to be done ever. Since I was a little kid, you guys know this too. So I make a video yesterday, of course, telling you guys how suicidal I've been feeling. Not necessarily that I want to do it, but that I'm ashamed of myself for being too afraid to do it. And I hated that I uploaded that, but I knew it was important and somebody somebody would be able to relate to that and hopefully see that I'm I'm struggling and maybe understand me or something, I don't know. Selfish of me to upload that. I probably should delete it. But anyway, man, at the end of the day I'm 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 standing I, like I said, I don't I don't have a whole lot of solutions for my sickness. I feel like I'm getting a lot worse. My anxiety is getting worse. My dependency for isolation is worse. Well, another reason why I don't want to call my family is because maybe they'll realize how sick I am and want to come down here. And I don't want to, you know, that's part of the anxiety, having people come see me or visit or whatever. I don't, that's uncomfortable for me. Maybe they'll want me to go do something like they asked me to do last time. Go get the vax that required me to leave the house. Didn't want to do it. Go to a church and ask for some counseling that required me leaving the house. Didn't want to do it. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't leave myself no room to fix my own damn problems, man. That's the problem with me. It's not that I, they're not avenues. It's that everything that I'm asked to do or everything that needs to be done requires me to do something that makes me face anxiety. Something that requires me to get out of this comfort zone, which I am dependent upon. This isolation that I've become such a dependency upon. Have just developed such a dependency for. I don't envy anybody who's not sick. You know, it's weird enough. I do like... Who I am because of the various things that I can do. Various art forms that I can embark on and different things that I can do, man. I love being me, but it's just, it just gets to a point where you don't really allow yourself a whole lot of room to really be happy. You don't allow yourself to fix your problems, but you hate your problems. You want them fixed. It doesn't make any sense. You need help. You got a family that'll help you, but you don't want to ask for it because your pride gets in the way. This is I don't leave myself no room to succeed. So how can I succeed? It's the self-destruction, I guess. I don't know how to fix it. So it's like, I, I don't know. I'm just stuck in a space where nothing can get done. And I'm just being forced to face one level of anxiety or another one situation or another. It's craziness. It's absolute lunacy. And, I, you know, it was this bad when I was a child, but I think... I think we're reaching a place where it's even worse than that, honestly, because at least I had my mother around to kind of snap me out of that or give me some human interaction or take me to the movies or something. Or, you know, she would take us to church, something. It would always be something that she could do that would remind me that human interaction is good and that I can survive without this dependency. And while I still remember those feelings and bring myself to do those things on my own, that doesn't exist within myself. It just ain't there. So, yeah, man, that's what it is, man. Mental illness, as it always is, beating me up, kicking me down. You know, pride is is, is punching me out. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm getting knocked around by my own damn head at all times. And uh, the good thing is I've run out of options good thing is, is I have to face something. Something's going to push me out of this house or into a job or into a situation that I deem un unhappy. Or so. Something's going to force me there. Something it is. If it's not starving, it's going to be, you know, not having my phone or something. And if I don't have my phone, the communication's off. Can't get it turned back on without communication itself. So I'm stuck. I have to call them. I don't have no choice. I have to sell crypto. I have no choice. And even in the face of not having no choice, I'm still denying myself. You know, it's like, nah, I'm not doing it. I give it another day. Whew. Or else one of those things where it's like, man, how do people who have what I have survive? How do they make it? They have to have family. They have to have people. They have to have a, a spouse or somebody to snap them out of this shit. I'd imagine most people who are like me really do end up killing themselves. Like, there's no other way you can make it. You can't. There's the world is not made for this. You can't sit down and do nothing and expect things to work out, but at the same time have a dependency for isolation. It doesn't work. 
These are two, this is a space that you cannot survive in. So while I love my life, and I'm telling you, I don't feel like hurting myself in any way, shape, or form. I'm great. Like, as far as, like, you know, like, I feel fine. In fact, I worked out yesterday. I'm still working on my body to try to make myself feel and look as good as I want to look. You know, just by default. Because I hate how I used to look as a child. I hated how my body was back then. So that alone keeps me eating right and working on myself. So it's a, it's a, it's a whole lot of confusion. On one hand, you want to relieve yourself of trauma. On the other hand, you love where you're at and the things that you're doing. I love my channel. I love my my artwork. I'm having so much fun doing the things that I love to do. I just don't have enough money to sustain my situation. So how do I bring this to my family? Say, yo, I'm sick as hell, just like I was as a child. You guys didn't help me then. Will you help me now? I mean, like, that's really what it is. Maybe they say no, and then what? I don't know. Shit falls apart, I guess. That's the reality of it, man. I am very, very ill. And I'm not claiming that, you know what I mean? I know how bad that is to claim that. You got to say you're well, you can do it, I can do it, all of that stuff. That is what I know is wisdom, but it's also what I know is not there. It feels not there, man. I'm consumed with negativity. I'm consumed with waiting on this Moas, a.k.a. the mother of all squeezes. That's all I allow myself to do, honestly. If anything else makes me tell people that things have gotten bad and then I have to explain to them why. And I think they're going to they're gonna laugh or look at me as like I'm pathetic. Like, you seriously still believe in AMC that much? Even though it's bleeding all this time and all this going on, you're like, yes, I definitely do. 130% do. I know what it can be. I don't know if it'll actually get there. I don't know if I'll execute my trades to get the most money out of it. Who knows? But what it should be able to do and what it's been doing in terms of changing things and forcing these hedge funds to face the fire. Hell yeah, what I'm doing is worth it. And no, I'm not taking the advice of people who've told me not to allow things to get this bad. Because I need to have as many human have many shares as humanly possible. I put every coin I had into this. You think I'm going to tear this down when things are actually happening because of these efforts? Hell no, I'm not doing that. But I don't know how my family feels about that. I don't even know what side of the spectrum they land on. I represent myself in this one. You know, to be completely honest with you, I don't know what my family thinks or who they're affiliated with. I don't know. I would be lying to you if I said I don't know. I don't know what my uncle's on. I don't know what my grandfather really on. I don't. I didn't grow up with them. I represent Brandon Deloney Fulmer, BDF 44. And that's who I'm doing this for in terms of putting myself through hell, try to put myself in a position to have the legacy that I want with every single share I own. And if I had the strength of mind to go back and, and make some more money, do some things to put myself in a position to make more money, I'd have built my position even further. You best believe I would have. I just couldn't bring myself to. And, and this is why I'm saying also that, yeah, I need to go get a job. But look where my head's at. That's the problem. It's like if, when you're self-aware, you know how how messed up you are. It's like, uh, what kind of professional would I really be? Like, honestly, with this mindset and with these set of concerns, with all I got going on, how could I expect to be effective employee for anybody? I wouldn't hire me. <laughs> I got wouldn't. And then I think about how unhappy I am with them jobs, man. I don't know if I could take no more of that stuff. Them days when I was so miserable walking up and down, praying to God to end this nonsense. Working in stupid jobs, dealing with these various personalities, man. I am not in a space to effectively promise you that I'll be who I need to be in those situations. I, in fact, I'm pretty certain I wouldn't be. Go out like what? I'm going to go down there and try to be a barista? Let somebody say the wrong thing to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like that kind of thing, dude. I'm not there. How do people like me make it, bro? How do we make it? It's like the world ain't even meant for us to make it. But I've survived 37 years, man. Live longer than Jesus. So I got to count for something. Even if it ain't today, you got to count for something. Truth be told, I want to be healthy, man. I want to be sane. I want to be 
free of these mental burdens and these anxieties and these concerns and this pride and all this bull crap. I want to be free of all of that. I want to be free of this debt. I want to be free of these worries. I want to be free of AMC even. I want this thing to go to the moon so I can end this process and move on with my life. I want to be free of every damn thing I feel bound behind, both internal and my responsibilities. I want my car to be in my garage without having to pay a million dollars to keep it. $300 there, $100 there, $1,500 there. Where the hell is that money coming from? Unemployment denied me my claim. I can't even pay them a little two hundred dollars in my rent, four hundred dollars, whatever little increments I would have loved to pay them. That start the process of paying that off. The, bi- the bills are sky high, y'all, as you can imagine, and not getting any better. And I just have to tell my family this, and I don't know how to do it. I just don't know how I'm gonna do it. But I'm of clear mind, as I said. I'm sober. It ain't no. No confusion as far as my clarity. I'm right here. And I'm transparent as ever, man. I stand before you guys as flawed and as sick and as messed up and as scared or whatever the hell this weakness is. I stand before you and tell you all this right here. I am still myself. I'm standing on what I believe in. I'm struggling with what I struggle with. And I love God. You know what I'm saying? I love my family. I love my friends. I try to keep their, this bull crap from them as best I can. That's one of the reasons why I don't be talking to people because I don't want to lay this on them, this impossible conundrum on them. That's why I stay away. It ain't because I don't love people. It ain't because they annoy me or some weird stuff. It ain't because I'm indifferent about their lives. Hell no. It's because I know that I am a burden. Can't help but be a burden. I can't help myself. My friend... One of my best friends, T, used to pay for me getting into the club all the time because I never had no money. Why? Because of shit like this. You know, broke by default. Because everything that requires me to get money, all that shit that y'all do to get money, makes me miserable, man. I ain't just talking about, oh, I'm miserable, I'm sad. No, I'm miserable, like, let me jump. Let's keep from having to do this. Sick. Very sick. You know, so that's what it is, man. I thank you guys for listening to this nonsense. I thank you guys for putting up with me and all my different topics as I continue to criticize coaches, criticize bad play and all this stuff. When I've got all these ridiculous problems of my own, can't even pull myself out of the dump I put myself in. But I can sure tell other people what they need to do. Kind of sucks, but it's what my brain does, man. Believe it or not, I actually think I make sense a lot of the time. And I think you may, too, if you're watching me. I actually am good at what I do. I don't lose confidence in that. But it's just how do I manage myself? How do I get out of this space of mind that's so damn sick, bro? I champion those who fight mental illness, man, because I want to be like that. I want to fix this. I want to be able to say I can do it, jump out there and do it. But it's holding me back hard, man. It's holding me back. It just that's just my reality. So I think I'll end it there, man. Probably should call my grandparent now and let them know what's going on. Probably won't do that. Even though I need to. Thanks for listening to all this, y'all. Pray for those who are going through what I'm going through. It'll trickle down to me. And if you got mental health issues and you got some support next to you, use yours, man. Use it. I don't care what your brain is telling you. Fight through that. Use your help. Get your help and become that help for somebody else. That's how you overcome the ego. You make sure that you pay it forward. That'll heal you of that. My name is BDF44. I thank you all for watching.